Hey workshop addicts, I'm John. Today I have a how-to tip for you. I'm going to teach you how to make this cool drunken checkerboard pattern along with making this uh, drinks for two wine glass holder. It's like, it turns into a nice little gift or just a decoration piece around the house. But um, yeah, we might as well kill two birds with one stone today. First thing we need to do is cut some thin strips. I already cut these on the table saw the other day. I have a whole bunch laying over or extra. So um, one thing is, is when you cut these thin strips, be very, very, very careful. And I used my gripper 200 system with the 1 8 inch leg added to it. Um, makes that a safer cut. So I have a whole stack of these. I have some long ones and I have some short ones for the project. So you need to cut a whole bunch of these. Put those aside. Now what I did is I took my walnut or my walnut board and my oak board, taped them together. It's a one by six, and what we're doing is making our first cut at 11 inches. Just took a random little quick pattern in here. Probably going to make three cuts, just because it's going to lay out nicely, and uh, you don't have to follow the lines real tight. Wherever the bandsaw blade takes you. We're just going to sand this down a little bit. Not much because we want them to still fit back together. We did a little sanding. I got all the tape off. It still matches up pretty good. And what we actually have is we have two of them of the same. So what we do now is we just alternate. And this is going to be our basis for our two drunken checkerboards patterns. Now we're going to move on, bring in the maple strips, and we are going to clamp them. Alright, now we're ready for the tricky part. Um, this is how it's going to be laid out. Oh, let me step back for a second. Um, you can probably see here I have plastic wrap on these pipe clamps. The reason for that is, is you may or may not know, if once a glue touches the pipe clamp, touches your wood, your color of this pipe clamp, it's going to stain the wood and it's really hard to get out. So. It's just easier to cover it with plastic wrap all the time. Keeps everything nice, neat, and clean. Um, the little strips that I cut were slightly longer than the, the rest of the board. That's because when it compresses, it's going to actually, you know, it's going to lose a little bit of its straight length. So <clears throat> these actually might be just a little bit short, but this setup is actually bigger than what we need. So it's going to be all right. So first things first, we'll dry fit up in here right now. And what we're going to do is pull some out and go a little bit at a time. A little bit of a glue up. the clamps off and this is what we end up with. We end up with basically um, alternating pattern <clears throat> and what we're going to do now is make sure that we have them at the same pattern stack them on top of each other again. You know, so they're in the same sequence just opposite colors and we're going to tape them back together again. Um, last night I cheated a little bit on this. Um, it dried. I took care of it. Took it back apart out of the clamps. I used a junk chisel I have to scrape off any of the dried glue. And then I took a um, belt sander and uh, kind of flattened it out a little bit, made it so uh, smoother and easier to work with. So this way, now that they're stacked on top of each other, it's easy to tape them together. When you tape them together, again, make sure you tape them really good so they don't move. At all while you're cutting it or while you're sanding it. 
I also took and snipped off those little pieces that hang over on the edges. That's why when you make this, you want to make this a little bit longer so you can trim it and um, keep everything nice and square. I'm going to tape it this way, this way, and the edges to make sure nothing moves. So once you make a cut, cut through the tape, then you're going to end up, if you cut through the tape and there's nothing there supporting it, keeping it together, it's going to come apart. So taper real good. So I'll make another cut. This time we're going to cut it this way instead of lengthwise. Now we're going to run it through again on the spindle sander. Um, this project uses a spindle sander quite a bit, Spin a spindle and belt. So I'm going to run it through again and just clean up the edges, just like we did the first time. Now that we got our cuts all made and sanded, um, we have our two pieces after we take the tape apart. So all we're going to do now is alternate the pieces just like we did the first time. Place this one with this one, this one with this one, this one with this one. So we'll put them together, fit right together, and now we have our checkerboard pattern again. Here's our thin strips. Again, each one's going to go right in between, and we're going to clamp her down. This is going to be the trickier one, because the more cuts you have, the tougher it is to clamp it up. So, uh, we have seven pieces here right now, and six pieces of maple to fit in between it. So I'm going to set it up, and then we'll go ahead and clamp it. Well, the clamp up is done. Um, I'm glad I didn't try to film that. That was a mess. Um, when you have more cuts than the first time, it's really hard to keep everything in line as you're clamping it down, especially I've got one trouble piece right here that kept wanting to squeeze out and pop out on both of these boards. So luckily I was prepared and I had a little extra cheaters around. I had a little flush cut saw here, a Japanese pole saw, whatever you want to call them. And I was able to cut these little stubs, like the little pieces of maple off of the side, get an extra clamp in there, squeeze it back together. So. One thing is when you're clamping these together or gluing and clamping these together, be prepared for something to be out of line. And if you can catch it before the glue gets hard and dries, it'll be a lot easier on sanding at the end. Um, it's critical on the second cut because all of these long lines from the first time that you cut, if any one of these gets out of whack just a little bit, it shifts this so these don't make a nice smooth curve anymore. So. The second glue up, the second clamp up is pretty important. Um, we're gonna let this sit for a little while, and when they're done, then we're gonna start sanding, and we'll work on the second step of the project where we actually make the uh, drinks for two. Well, the glue sat on our boards. I took them out of the clamps. I ran them over to the belt sander and sanded uh, all the high areas down on here. It'll be a little easier to work with now that it's been sanded. Um, you can use however you want to get this flat, but I just use a belt sander. It works pretty good. Um, so that's how you do the drunken checkerboard section of this video. Now we're going to do the drinks for two. Um, I mean, you can do this without this pattern. You can do it with just about any board this size. So um, I have my pattern that I made, and I can use it over and over again. If you need this shape or if you want to follow this closer, you can go to workshopaddict.com and then search for uh, drunken checkerboard drinks for two. And... Um, this should pop up. I actually have this picture on here. I believe you should be able to download it or save the image and print it off and make your own pattern. So what we're going to do now is basically just set it on the board, trace it out, and we are going to go over to the bandsaw and we are going to cut it close to this line. Um, you don't want to cut it all the way to the line because you know, your bandsaw might give you some jagged edges or whatnot. This way it'll allow you to go to the spindle sander, oscillating spindle sander, and uh, sand it to the line. 
and that way you'll have a nice oval. So let's go over to the bandsaw now. Now we're over to the oscillate, the rigid oscillating spindle sander. Uh, this also has a belt attachment and it does make it a little bit easier to, to go ahead and sand toward the lines with the belt. Um, I used to do it on just the regular on the oscillating spindle part and it worked just fine. Uh, but this is just a little bit easier. It's got a little more aggressive of sand belt than I like on it so you got to be really careful that you don't dig into it. Um, as long as you're careful you can sand to the line and it'll look pretty good. All right, we're back from our sander. Um, got all the edges sanded. So now we're going to go back to our pattern and put the hole punches in, punch some holes, so we can use the Forstner bit to drill our holes. three holes punched and now we'll go over to the drill press and the, use the Forstner bits and cut our holes. Now we're going to go ahead and drill some holes. Uh, the two outside holes are going to be an inch and five eighths inch and the center hole is an inch and a quarter um, for the bottle. You can make this one slightly bigger if you want but that seems to work pretty good. So I'm just going to line her up. big bit like this you want to take your time so you don't overheat it. You need a sharp bit on this one too. Otherwise when you break through the back of it it'll have tear out. You also want to have a piece of wood underneath this for the same reason. nice clean hole. Um, one thing is, is if you do have any tear out on here you can fix it with a router. You just have to route every single edge with the chamfer or a roundover bit. Um, problem there is it's a lot more sanding. It looks nice but boy it's a lot of sanding. So we're going to cut the other holes and then we'll move on. Uh, what we're going to do now is after we got the holes just to clean them up a little bit and make them look really nice I'm going to put them right over top of here, sand the inside of the hole and then we'll go ahead and change the spindle sander um, column here and do the inside of those. So here we go. Um, got the hole sanded and what I've done now is I took our other pattern, there's two patterns with this, that um, helps you cut this groove so the glasses can slide in. Um, I tried doing this freehand the first time and stuff and it was a mess. I, I can't draw a straight line and save my butt. So went ahead and made pattern basically it's the same size as this just gives me the cutout liner up take a look at your pattern make sure it looks neat on the side and you just draw your lines which I've already done once those are drawn I just use a jigsaw and cut them out Cut one for both sides, and after this, all you've got left is sanding, 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 and your finish. I use tongue oil and a few, like three coats of tongue oil, and some paste wax after that, and they look really nice. So that's about it. I cut this side, and I'm ready to start sanding. And I'm not going to video the sanding because everybody knows how to sand, and it's going to take forever. So. Hopefully you guys enjoy this, and uh, good luck, have some fun with it. This is John from WorkshopAddict.com. Talk to you later.